Hi everybody, welcome to the Leviathan Week painting video. Today we're taking a look at the Warhammer 40,000 Leviathan Terminators um, and uh, doing another how to paint video. So this is my second time ever making one of these. So just like with the first one, uh, I am I am, I am working on how this is actually done because I've never actually made a painting video like this before, uh, doing voiceovers and sound tracking. So we'll dive in, look at how I painted the Terminator uh, in my cobalt blue sort of space brain function form that I do to match all my stuff from Indominus. Uh, and yeah, and we'll see what the finished result looks like. So let's jump in and start painting. All right, let's get to it. This is one of the uh, three Stormbolter and Power Fist Terminators I decided to start off this uh, this next project with. Now I picked the Terminators to do next after I finished the five Infernus Marines because, well, they're the other unit in the Combat Patrol allotment of models in this, and I figured if I started with those, I'll do the, the Captain and the Librarian next. Um, I would kind of break the back of the project and I could kind of pick away the rest of it at my leisure. So once again, just like with the um, Infernus Marines, I'm going to start with the basing gel um, and that's because I want this to be drying uh, this whole project is about time saving right so you want to have things on the go while you're doing other things and if you get the basing gel down quickly it takes a while to dry um, you can do a bunch of them at the same time and it will just it, it kind of like maximizes the efficiency of, um, of, of doing sort of things all at once and I'm gonna pop this guy on a handle and that means that while I'm you know, moving the model around and holding the model, I won't accidentally stick my fingers in that basing gel while it dries. Uh, less than than I might actually do. I'm, I'm probably still going to do that, but just less. I'm gonna grab my base metallics. I tend to start with those. I do metallics first and give them a chance to all dry before I put my washes down. It's gonna be a little bit of that Iron Warrior Retributor armor. Um, that's a Mechanicus Standard Gray for the uh, the the sort of like tubey bits and then some Brass Scorpion. Uh, and that'll be for the weapon casings, like the, sorry, the ammunition casings um, and any like appropriate sort of like techno bits uh, the handle on the sergeant's uh, power sword I'm gonna do that way too uh, and as this is the biggest of the colors and I like to go biggest colors to smallest colors I'm gonna kick off with that iron warrior uh, that means all of the um, cabling at the backs of his arms the magazine for his storm bolter uh, the actual like sort of like weapon gubbins the barrels the sight although I don't think that's actually a sight. He, he has cameras on the bottom of his arm, so I'm pretty sure he's not aiming down the iron sights on that thing, unless something's gone horribly wrong and his helmet's gotten blown off, which, I don't know, they're space marines. They don't wear helmets sometimes. That happens. Um, and again, because I'm doing this big, wide color, I'll put a bit of water in that Iron Warrior too, just thin it down so that it sinks in the recesses and gets um, in there a little bit quicker. Uh, those sort of gimbals that are on his legs, I'll paint. I, I kind of went back and forth on doing the ones in the arms or not. I ended up not, not doing it. And then the venting on the back um, and his little sort of like camera optic on his right shoulder as well with that same Iron Warrior. Uh, from there, I'm gonna go, so grab my next metallic um, and start picking away at that. Uh, I decided not to do the chest, like the, the gold is actually not used very much here compared to on the Infernus Marines, that Retributor Armor. Uh, I think I only use it on the skulls in the backs of the arms, any of the Crux Terminatuses, um, and on the uh, the sort of like winged skull that's on all the Storm Bolters and weapon casings. It's a little less gold here, but that Retributor Armor, it covers super duper well. Uh, it'll go right over top of this Prime. Um, I, think I didn't mention it at the beginning, but just like this whole project before, if you watch the Infernus Marine, um, this is a Green Stuff World Gloss Black Primer with the Cobalt Blue over top, and that's how I get that nice lacquered blue armor. Um, I just find it makes the ultramarines look really menacing and dark. I'm really happy with it. And it's a great speed color. Uh, and then that Mechanicus Standard Gray is going to get used for all of the like rubberized sort of like hingeable parts on the marines. So the backs of the legs there where there's sort of like a tubing. You can see there's sort of like a almost like a bodysuit sort of being exposed. Uh, and I'm also going to base coat all of their uh, Crux Terminatuses that are on them and their eagle uh, like on the chest the chest eagle uh, and also like the face plates All right, I think it's gonna end up being white It's gonna start off with this gray uh, Primarily because it's gonna be easier to paint lighter blues like that uh, blue horror or elf one blue over top of this um, While we're painting you can see here too my camera starting to spin down I didn't realize how heavy it was on the gimbal and the gimbal wasn't locked down tight on it. I have it on a mic stand <laughs> and so it's slowly like spinning down. You'll be able to see more and more of the edge of the table <laughs> as this goes on. <laughs> I eventually did lock it down. 
Now, the base coat's being done, uh, for the most part. I think I did find the straps. This guy didn't have one of the Crux Terminuses, but the straps on the other Marines um, ended up basing Thondi, this uh, Thondi Brown. The little bit of Brass Scorpion was on the ammo casings inside the magazine, um, and a few other bits in the other Terminators, but that was the primary part of that. I just didn't want it to look the same as the gold. If you were in a hurry and you really were like cutting for time here, you could use that same gold and just blend it up with a different color after you washed it. Um, but I, I had the time and I was already planning on using this. Uh, there's a, on the assault cannon ring too, there's like a pile of like shell casings basically on the ground. And then finally we're doing the purity seal. So that Galvabrak uh, red and the Hobgrot um, skin tone base for the purity seals. I also did the eyes and all the lenses for like his little underarm cameras and his optic uh, on his shoulder as well. And that hobgrout flesh covers really well, especially over this like dark, dark blue metallic. Um, so it's a great base tone. It, it also has that wonderful yellowy old parchment look. So I found blending a little bit of a beige into it, like a screaming skull. I think I used Necron fl or Flatwood flesh maybe. Um, when it was all said and done, it, it gave a nice, a nice richness to it once it was dry. And then the Galvabrak Red, so we do all those lenses, and of course the wax um, stamp on their purity seals, slash oaths of the moment. And these are real quick, there's only a few of these on here, and then of course his eyes as well. And that means when I wash these, they'll darken down. Nice and easy, I'm using a, I think a, um, just a standard Citadel layer brush here, I have lying around. And that way when I do throw a little null oil over top of this, it'll just sort of ring it and pick it out. But that base red's already there. Next up is going to be a little bit of Corvus Black. I think this is the last base coat color. Um, and the Corvus Black is just going to go on the weapon cases themselves. It's just that exterior case. Uh, and I'm saving that for last because obviously I'm going, again, like the deepest colors, the colors that are in the most recesses, up to the highest point colors. And this is another time-saving trick because you're you're basically allowing for mistakes. Like I could sloppy paint the metallics in that storm bolter, and I knew I was going back afterwards with that weapon casing black. I'm not trying to stay inside the lines because I know that my early stage painting all those base coats can be relatively like slapped on, and I'm going to neaten up anything around it that gets a little bit extra on it. So it it's just another way of sort of like saving your peace of mind and having process take a bunch of time and sort of like stress away from getting things right. And so you got banged on all the Corpus Black and it's a great like almost black, like a super deep gray, but that null oil will really like rich sort of like um, rich up the recesses and, uh, and make it nice, you know, pop and be nice and striking. And that's all the base coats. So this guy's ready for some washes, but we're gonna let him dry because I want to make sure my metallics are done. And while I was waiting for them to dry, I did a couple more stages than the rest of the Terminators. And again, this is all about time saving, right? So if you are waiting for something to happen, fill that time, you know, go for a run. Or if you're in the middle of painting Space Marines and making a Space Marine video, put some more paints down on Space Marines. There's no such thing as um, wasted time if you're taking advantage of it. So the null oil uh, and the Agrax, so should I start with the Agrax here? Immediately realized that I've, this is where I was, my hands were before when the camera tilted down and then I tilted the camera back up and I looked up and realized on the um, monitor that, oh wait, this is where you were holding it when the camera started flipping down. You need to move your hands again, Ash. You suck at making painting videos. <laughs> this is just terrible. <laughs> this is this is a complete trial by fire right now when the space rate's barely ever on screen. So now you can see I realize it. I'm like, ah, oh, shit. And I move it. Um... And then that Nelnoil, oil, so I move the Marines too because I'm like, ah, oh, these don't need to be here. Uh, that Nelnoil oil is going to go on everything else. So those recessed cracks where the um, sort of hinging is, that that like tubed hinging, uh, and also the weapon cases. Uh, I'm also going to put it on the Aquila on his chest, or that like sort of winged skull. That's not really an Aquila. Uh, and also on the faceplate and stuff too. And it's just going to pop all of the like venting. It's going to circle the eyes and give a little more depth to that gray. So I'm going to go and highlight it up to white. There'll be a nice strong contrast. I'm also washing sort of generally some of the recesses of the blue power armor too. That little bit of Nelnoil, oil, and I'm, I miss my Nelnoil oil gloss because it looked way better over top of this metallic. Um, but it's going to cause a bit of depth too, uh, especially in those like panel lines you can see on his back. Um, that when I hit the silver over top of it, it's just going to give it a little more richness. 
And there, now we gotta wait for this to dry. So we'll go back and do some more stuff on Marines. And the last stage of washing is actually the bases. Um, to mimic that uh, Sector Mechanicum base you saw on my Kill Team Ultramarines, I'm just doing a bit of rust marking in between the legs and the center of the bases. So I'm using some Mornfang Brown and some Blazing Orange, which I'll use again later for the eyes and the optics and stuff. Mix them together in the palette and I'm throwing in some water. Good healthy amount of water. And the goal here is you're gonna put some really thin down of this like rusty sort of like brown mix in the center. You're gonna wash your paintbrush off in the paint cup and then while it's still wet, so without drying it, you're just gonna use pure water to tease it out from the middle. I think this is, a, I managed to capture on camera way better than I did for the other brains this time around. Uh, except that you can't see me put it in the middle here in the first little bit. So you can see that I'm putting it in the middle, having it pool around his feet, right? I'm being fairly liberal with it. And as that fades, there's the sort of capillary action of just like pure water. So I'm just wetting my paintbrush and teasing it out from the middle. And again, holding the marine in such a way that you cannot see it. <laughs> is gonna just pull that central paint out and it's gonna have a fade. It'll be more saturated in the middle and it'll be lighter around the edges. Adding a little more paint in the center if I need it. And you can see it's bleeding out from the center there. And so when it dries, what's going to happen is you're gonna have a fade transition from one side to the other. And now that can dry as I do the rest of the details. And I decided to start this time with the Crux Terminatus and the faceplate. I think it's going to go up to white. Um, and I grabbed some blue horror and some Corax white to do that with. I also realized I'd like cleaned my uh, little texture paint spade on my palette. There was like little chunks of old like Strohan Battlemeyer stuck to it. So I made sure that it was gone off the palette before I put it down. Um, and now we're just going to put like a, just a straight blue horror highlight on all the raised areas. So it's just me picking out all of like the everything that that nice null oil wash has allowed sort of like to come into focus so starting with the skull there i'll work my way around and get the cross of the crux and this is all with the lighter of the dark of the two dark grays and i'm leaving that nice sort of like rich um tone from the null oil and the uh, mechanic is standard there in the cracks moving on to the chest eagle and then I'm gonna make this pop later on with that Corax white right at the edge. But you can see now the definition's gone up nice and high. And I'll continue this on any of these parts where I've got the white, um, the white like Crux Terminatus and Chest Eagle. I really like Althuan Gray and Blue Horror for this. I think they're both really good at um, covering a darker gray uh, and giving you a nice transition between gray and white. Uh, it's a Old, I mean, in, in old GW paint terms, Space Wolf Grey was kind of the color we always did this with. This is just a little bit closer to white to start off with. Um, and it's a great strong pigment and base tone. So now I'm outlining his face. Grabbing all those little vent places. Being careful not to step on the eyes, obviously, because I've already base coated the eyes with that Galbabrak. And then I'll neaten it up afterwards. And again, this is a quick paint job. Like, you could go through and do like three or four layers here. But I'm trying to show you a way of doing this without a whole lot of mixing. And so you're picking colors that are fairly close to the final tone that you want. So you can do this in three or four steps as opposed to like nine or 10 steps. If you're doing this as like a, a painting piece or competition piece, which is definitely not the point of these videos. This is more about getting projects done um, and finishing things quickly. Uh, you might go and actually mix these tones together like three or four times, but these are, these are close enough to the finished colors that you want that you can use the wash to kind of create that and then go through. Um, and just use two tones to, to pick up the edges. And that Corax white is just gonna be on the leading edges of everything. You can see it's just a step higher. It's actually gray, like it's not even close to white. It's it's definitely a gray. Uh, it's a very strong silver, like I think it's got that, that aluminum sort of white pigment in it. Um, but it's great because it covers fantastically. And you can see I'm just pulling out the leading edges here. And when you're powering through highlights like this, again, the high points are what you're trying to hit, right? You're not trying to hit the, you're not trying to outline these bits. You're trying to get the raised edges because you've already done the work with the wash and with that initial base tone. So you can see I'm just pulling out the very corners of that eagle and that's gonna cause it to pop more. So not all the way along on the top because that's the, that's the raised edge, but then on the actual like wings, just the corners, just the edges, and that's gonna give it a nicer transition between the two grays the Nelm oil, and then this white. And then just outlining those plates on his face mask, on his helmet. And once I've got that glow in with the eyes, his whole head will really pop, because it's got this great sort of menacing black 
um, lacquered blue cobalt sort of like armor. That white, the white face plate's really like sort of starkly contrasting and sort of it has a real nice sort of like glow to it. Really, really makes his face look um, ghostly and sort of haunting. So those highlights done, it's on to some new colors, he said, question mark. Oh yeah, here we go, we're gonna do the reds. A little Mephiston red, a little Blazing Orange. Man, that's an old paint. It's it. It's not old to me, but I know it's old. That golden yellow is old though, because it's in a crazy old hex pot, <laughs> and I couldn't find a yellow that I liked um, from the current GW yellow, so I went and dug out an old golden yellow that was somehow still good, even though it's in one of those terrible pots. And so I'm gonna do um, all of the Purity seals. So again, just outlining that purity seal using the um, gavel brack and that dried null oil to sort of create that depth, and then just picking out those sort of like leading edges of it, outlining it almost. And then the eyes. And of course, I go right off camera again. <laughs> so I'm just terrible at this. Especially when I'm doing the eyes because I'm holding them sideways. I'm using my trick here. Where you don't you don't stab with the paintbrush. You draw a line, and I'm going from the centers out to create that thing. So I keep turning the, the model around in my hand because that's my habit to get that straight line with the paintbrush. And then I'm doing all of the gemming. So the bottom third with the Mephist on red on all the optics, on the backs of his wrists, on his gun, and on his little like targeter. And then with that blazing orange. And then it's just the same exact process for the optics. I'm not gonna use a blazing orange at all on the purity seals. They're basically done. They only need one highlight because they're like a rich dark wax. But the eyes need a second highlight in the optic. So you see the bottom quarter now instead of third. And then there's just the very interior of the eye. Pulling back to the middle. And I'll use a little bit more of that Corox white as like a jeweling effect in the corners afterwards for point of reflection. with that glow put in there I'm just gonna do one more highlight a little bit of golden yellow I might mix a touch of the blazing orange into it just to warm it up a little and actually golden yellow is a historically thin color too so that blazing orange will actually allow it to thicken up a little bit and cover it a little bit better and then the optics and the eyes will get that right at the very corners so you can just see right in the bottom like eighth with that color right in the very corners of the eyes just to warm that glow up. And then again, the bottom quarter, I go right off screen again, because I'm like, <laughs> I'm so focused, I gotta get done. <laughs> Immediately go off screen. And then come back and realize where the camera actually is. There you go. And get the bottom of those optics too. On his arms, his little, his little arm cameras, his little like, point and shoot. You imagine trying to see through your arms, through the cuff link on your, your arm. Must be so disconcerting. And then that back corner, I bump the camera with my head as I'm leaning over. Uh, and then that back corner gets dotted with some white. So do the optics on the little sort of like shoulder cam on the top, like the opposite edge basically, because that's the point of reflection. Because what's happening is that glow at the bottom is actually light coming through that red glass from the top. So the very top point is the point of reflection of the light source and the bottom is the glow of it um, reflecting off the interior of the glass object if you want a little nickel's worth of optics lessons there as to why the bottom glows and the top has the white dot on it. And that's it for him. So we're into highlighting some metallics now. Let's highlight with some canoptic uh, alloy for that little um, bit of ammunition you can see there. And I'll throw a highlight onto those rounds. And just holding them sideways so we can do a brush stroke in a straight line. As opposed to trying to like poke the paintbrush in there and go sideways. And then we'll grab our burnished gold. And we'll do the exact same thing just for that. <laughs> like there's so little here. 
uh, for that little uh, wing skull on the weapon and the one skull on the back of his right arm. There's not a lot of there's all the metallic highlighting here for these. Most of it's gonna be the armor plating and the actual like weapon gubbins that we're doing. I'm doing that wing deagle just like the one on his chest. So just picking out the top leading edges of the wing. And then the individual feathers just at the backs, basically. And that's it for those metallics. Now the long process of banging up the armor edges. So we're going to get that Stormhost Silver out. And remember, the whole point of this lacquered armor is it saves us highlighting time because it's more about like battle damaging the edges of the armor than it is about creating like a condensing highlight. And then we're going to use a little bit of that um, Skaven Blade Dinge on the weapon casing to highlight the black. We'll do that first because then we can do our metallics at the same time or our Stormhost Silver at the same time. And this is just pulling at the hard edges on that Storm Bolter grabbing any areas you think like little vents and stuff on the side that require a little bit of additional highlight just to kind of pop what isn't pronounced by the wash right so you have your first stage of highlighting is actually darkening down the recesses and then the second level is just popping out those hard edges and making the leading edges glow a little and then we get that silver out let's go <laughs> and this is again the, the whole point of um, of this silver is that it's a, it's a single stage highlight, right? We're trying to save time here. We've done a metallic uh, paint scheme, so there's not a lot of highlights required. The highlight's coming naturally from the paint um, of that like cobalt blue, uh, but we're gonna also give a little highlight to the uh, Iron Warriors that we've washed down, just grabbing the edges of everything, kind of outlining that uh, bolter case. And you can use the side of the paintbrush when you're using a hard edge like that. It actually makes it way easier. You're using not the tip, but sort of like the front, maybe like tenth of the paintbrush, and just running it along that hard edge to pick out those um, lines and just create kind of like a natural point of reflection. Get on his mouth, on those little vents and grills at the end of his mouth there, on the big camera network on his shoulder. And once those sort of like, I guess, machine bits are painted, and we're going to do the armor. Now the edge of the armor is a whole damn thing. <laughs> so um, it, you're not actually trying to create a highlight. You're actually trying to get most of the leading edges of the armor to be edged with this silver. I'm going to use the flat inside of my paintbrush quite a bit and just sort of uh, knock along any hard edges that you see. But even a scooped edge, like the toes, you can do a little sort of blaze of this silver on because the idea is that this is where the armor has been wearing right that lacquer is wearing off and the, the metal underneath is showing through so using that sort of front maybe eighth of your paintbrush edge to grab the lines is just going to give a little blaze to this it's not about trying to create a point of reflection it's about trying to create a point of wear this is almost weathering uh, more than it is highlighting and it looks great and sharp on the tabletop because you have a really strong contrast between these two colors. That's why if you do red, like a red power armor, you want it to be a very deep, rich red because you want that strong sort of like contrast between the silver and the colored metallic. And it looks really good on the ultramarines. So I'm just going along here, grabbing all the sort of like edges I can find, but not too many. Again, I'll leave some too as if, if they're sort of like recessed or more protected by his, um, his body then I won't use them, I won't highlight them, but that big back panel I'll do, all the edge of his, of his back plate, and I'm just gonna go through and keep keep banging on this normal silver. And honestly, this is the longest part of painting this way, but it's still way faster than like three colored highlights on a Space Marine. <laughs> so those metallics are done, and it's time to do some basing. I, I kind of skipped a step here, the basing wasn't quite dry, uh, I normally would have dry brushed this guy before I did all the rest of these base tones. And you'll see I did that in the Infernus Marine. Um, but this is my trick for doing these bases. I'm going to grab a little bit of Ulth One, or not Ulth One, Blue Horror. And I'm going to dry brush lighter to the outside and leave that depth of color on the outside. And just like I said with the Infernus Marines, this is a great way of adding differences to your textured bases. If you're using a texture paint or any of the other brands of texture paint, like I'm using GW Astro Granite here. If you're using the Vallejo ones, there's a million different kinds. 
But even if they're already pre-colored, they're not just a gel, like Vallejo sells like a, just a clear gel, um, you can get a ton of mileage out of them just by kind of staining and changing the tint and the palette. Like on my um, other miniatures, I think on my Custodes, I did like a turquoise, I've done purples, um, I've done a whole bunch of different like just tintings, and they'll look different every time, but the big time saving is that the texture and the initial base coat color is going down at once. So there's the uh, blue horror, and I'll use a little bit of that Corax white, same thing, and just sort of bang out the edges. So with the basing done, let's throw some decals down. A little hot water and gloss varnish. Uh, I think I said this in the previous video, but with airbrush primers, I, I tend to worry a little bit about using a strong um, decal solvent, so I just do the gloss varnish trick and immediately pull it off camera. So I'm just putting down some gloss varnish as a base tone, throwing my decal in that hot water, a little cake cup, a little Dixie cup. And soaking it down. And I meet, I think I dropped the decal at this point. It just disappeared. <laughs> yeah, I think I dropped it on the ground. I had to like go fish it out <laughs> because because that's how that's how professional this is being done. Um, once that's had a good chance to set, grab an old paintbrush. Get all that gloss varnish off there, just have a little bit of water. I'll put gloss varnish back over top. And this is just the uh, Crux Terminatus I'm going to put on the back of his power fist. If I slide that on there, get it in place, put a little dab of gloss varnish on there, just move it around. And you can push with the end of an old paintbrush and that'll, that'll help you move it. You want to push the edges of the decal to relocate it and get it into place on where you want it to be. That's my pro trip. D don't touch it. Try not to touch it if you can, but if you can, if you want to nudge it, nudge the edges. And then I'm throwing a little more gloss varnish over there. And when that's dried, it'll snuggle down the back of that power fist. Same thing, dot of water, bit of gloss varnish. Prime the area on the shoulder pad. And then I'm going to throw on the big Ultramarines U. Get some nice ripping hot water. I don't think you need these new decals from GW. You don't need boiling water. Hot water is just fine. It'll soften the decal more than enough to. I said decal. I go back and forth because I've lived places where you say both those things. You say decal and you say decal. <laughs> uh, but the decal is going down. Decal, decal, potato, tomato whatever you want to say. Uh, and again, I'll, you see I'm just nudging the edges there to get it where I want to be. I am terrible at keeping this thing on camera when there's something else in front of me, like that water pot. And I'll throw a little gloss varnish on it. And make sure it dries secure. And then it's just time for that victory lap. You know, Abaddon Black. Pop this guy off his uh, stand, move everything out of the way. And apparently that cup was leaking. <laughs> I, don't, I think it's, I've used it a million times for decals, so I think it's leaking. Now a little Abaddon Black, and <laughs> I cleaned the water up because I noticed the water cup was leaking. I'm gonna pop this guy off his uh, armature and hold him by his back in the bottom of the base. And it's time to paint that base rim. It's the most satisfying part of painting any miniature is painting the edge of the base. And that will be this Terminator done. I'm gonna let him sit and dry for a good long time. I really wanna make sure that those decals have uh, adhered with that art coat because if I go and spray it with a finisher, I'm gonna use that Rust-Oleum chalked uh, matte clear sealer because I'm I'm like 95% sure that that's just Tester's Dull Coat in a big can. It's made by the same company and it seems to have the exact same effect. <laughs> um, but it will cause silvering. Uh, what'll happen is the, the water molecules or water that's in that paint will unfortunately um, cause a bit of like graying effect if you don't let it dry all the way. And so this dude is all done. There he is, my Space Marine Terminator. First one finished for the uh, Space Marine half of Leviathan. So I'll see you tomorrow for the painting video as we tackle another model from this collection uh, and get ready to uh, to do some Tyranids later in the week. Thanks for watching. Hey there, I hope you enjoyed that video. There are tons of other games all recorded for you to watch. Click over to my channel page if you haven't already and have a look to the dozens of playlists full of videos. I guarantee you'll discover a game you haven't seen played before. I put out new videos seven days a week, and every day is themed to a different genre as I continue to explore the wider world of gaming. 
Of course, none of that's possible without you, the viewer, so click a like and subscribe if you'd like to stay on top of what's happening here daily. My two kids and I are massively grateful to be able to have the flexibility of this job so I can always maximize my time with them. If you want to support me continue to put out this content, it's only possible because of my amazing backers on Patreon who support the studio, equipment, and model costs, as well as being how I make the bulk of my living. You can also help out by buying a t-shirt through Spreadshirt, a measuring gauge or widget from Death Row Designs, or buying one of my games and supplements like Last Days, Gamma Wolves, and Blaster. As a way of showing my appreciation, patrons get early access to new games and supplements that I write throughout the course of the year. Huge thanks for watching, it really does help out, and happy gaming.